Hello and welcome to Stories That Shape Us. My name is Joanna Daniel. So I, I tried to quote a scripture in my last podcast. Um, you can't use, don't use the Bible to manipulate and control or to, to rather to reason away abuse. Don't use the Bible to reason away abuse. And um, I I was trying to quote a, a, a scripture verse and I forgot what I, I, I didn't know it properly. So I'm going to read it for you now. Um, and it connects with what I'm going to talk about today. So it's John 1 verse, John 1 verse, the verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I think I'm, I'm, I muddled it up in the last um, podcast when I was talking about how if, if, if in him was life, and sometimes scriptures is used to manipulate and to control, then how it's not life-giving. The thing that's supposed to be life-giving is breaking um, it's breaking people. And that was not what it was intended to do. I know it gives me life. Um, so today I'm talking about how parents use, how parents uses the Bible to, to, to manipulate and control. And it really, really breaks my heart. And there are many things that we've had to unlearn as parents because it's just so easy when it's in when it's in culture, when it's in church, when it's all around you, when you see it happen all the time, when it's done to you, it's really easy to 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 kind of replicate that. Um, and so that's why self-awareness is so important. We must always be on our journey of being self-aware, being understanding ourselves so we can change things. That we can change habits that we developed, um, things that we pattern. We can know what they are so that we can change it. So it's when parents use when parents use the Bible as a means of oppression. Now I see this happen many times, and it's a no-win situation because oftentimes we hear about the children who leave the church, and I'm and I'm saying that in quotes because, and and we wonder. We said, oh, but but everything looked great, and we don't know. We don't know why. I'm not saying that in those families the Bible was used to manipulate and control, but I'm saying I've been around enough to know that it's done. And I, I think it's a lack of parental tools that causes that, a lack of uh, things to use, tools to use, uh, a lack of self-awareness, a lack of self-control. When we don't know how to manage our own behavior, then we, then we use the Bible. I've, when, I, when I'm speaking, I say this all the time, that the best parenting advice I've ever had was one day I was complaining to God about the children one of the children, one of the child, one, one of my child children, I'm muddled up today again, but I was complaining to God anyway. And he said, Joanna, in those moments when you want them to give you their heart, I don't have yours. So for me, that meant in those moments when something happened and I'm angry, now they didn't make me angry. I am angry because of what it resonates with, because of how I feel, because of the things that I am thinking. I have to take responsibility for my anger and not let my children be responsible for it. So in those moments, those moments I have to surrender. And it's the best parenting advice I've ever had because I've learned how to surrender in those moments and allow, allow myself to be calmed so I can have a rational, reasoned, measured response. Because when we don't learn how to do that, to manage our emotions. We don't have a rational reason measured response and our children bear the brunt of it. And because we don't have those responses, then we tell them that it's their fault. And we, we send them to read scripture and we, and we quote scripture at them because we can't manage our emotions. And, our, our, and they can see it. Sometimes children will know. And, and so they see it as hypocritical. And why would you want to have anything to do with something that's hypocritical? And so those are questions that we, we have to ask ourselves as parents. So I was listening to a video on the mother wound. Um, the mother wound, for those who don't know, is the, 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 the hurt that uh, we sustain in early relationships between the mother, especially the mother-daughter relationship. So I was listening to this video on the mother wound as she talks about some of the tools that mothers use as a means of manipulation and control. And she mentioned religion and the Bible as a tool that is used. And it immediately resonated because I see it so many times and I hear it so many times. For those who are Christians, this, this presents a really complex problem 
when you grow up used and the Bible was used as a tool to manipulate and to control, um, it, it presents a really complex problem when you're Christians, because one, you might believe in the Bible. You would believe in the word of God because in him was life and the life was the light of men. And two, it's also true that it's used to manipulate and abuse you. So those two things are true. And th sometimes there's a real challenge to to unpack and to uh, to um, figure out the complexities of those two things. Because while you're hurting, you might not want to read it because it was used to manipulate and control. And who wants to listen to the thing that was used? Nobody. So there's a lot of unpacking that needs to be done, a lot of processing that needs to be done to be able to separate the two. Um, it takes work to be able to separate what your mother did and the words that she used from the inspired word of God. So some will deny this is necessary work without acknowledgement and separating without without us being acknowledging and separating it it will continue beneath the surface just like a volcano waiting to explode and it explodes in different ways as i said the, the children that are leaving um what the statistics shows about people leaving and i wonder how many have been through this where if the bible was used to manipulate and to control um and they not understanding that that is why there's resistance to it and not understanding that there is what where where the root of the resistance come from and how to do the work of unpacking so if you if the bible was used to manipulate and to control you do these th two things one understand what how it was used not excuse it just understand it understand how it was used understand the impact of it understand the places where you probably can't read and you struggle more and to know that because it was used to manipulate and to control doesn't mean that was the intended purpose of the words because it was used to manipulate and to control and so those two things have to be understood and unpacked honestly if you're listening and because of that you don't know, want to know um, this is not apologetics or trying to get you to do anything, just that you also understand because you might also need to unpack because it was used in the way that it was done. You know, I, I'm forever apologizing for Christians and I want to use this opportunity to, to do that if that was ever done to you. If you're a mother and you know, and you're a parent and you recognize that you did it, it's really important to stop. We, you know, you can't manipulate your children using the word of God. It will cause harm and it will cause severe damage. It really will. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Stories That Shape Us. If you experience that, my next one is how to really heal. Some of the stages to heal from religious trauma. Um, so join me in the next episode of Stories That Shape Us. Take care.